points in that series, but they didn't prioritize it in their first two picks. But I feel like if you see a Yumi over there, either you're trying to steal away the Ezreal or lock in something that can punish in the 2v2. Yeah, you're going to force the hand. You do not want to give away Ezreal Yumi. And of course, Ender, you did say that early priority for Mad Lions was to lock in the duos. Knowing there's a support already in, knowing you've denied that Ezreal, you have to think that Kaiser will want to lock in a support pick now. Um, makes me think a little bit about like Champion Pool. I think with Gragas being banned and then Lee Sin still being open and available, that's something that I wouldn't want to give to Shadow. So that could be another consideration for them. And instead, it's going to be that support that you talked about. So it's Ezreal. Leona already. Yeah, this makes so much sense here to go for the Leona and try to punish Yumi whenever she pops out of her ally here. You're going to be looking to jump on forward there. And with an Ezreal too, he actually delivers some considerable damage in those early skirmishes, especially when you see people going for the early Sheen uh, recalls early on. But there you go. That's going to be the Lee Sin steal away now, putting it into the hands of Yankos. Because I can guarantee you, had Yankos not locked that in, Shadow was going to play the Lee Sin 100%. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, this is the third time that Shadow, uh, correction, um, Kaiser has played the Leona. He's won one and lost one. In terms of most played champions for Shadow, uh, Lee Sin, nine games, Gragas, five games, and then his next is Olaf at five. <laughs> but is this really going to be LeBlanc into Azir? So what do you think of this matchup? So here's the thing with the LeBlanc pick is that Last time these two teams faced off, G2 banned the LeBlanc in the first three games, but then when they left it open, Humano was like, nah, I don't need it, I can beat you with other stuff. But now, with the Azir locked in early, Humanoid picks this one. So G2 had to have seen this coming, because when Humanoid sees an Azir, it's very likely going to be the LeBlanc to look to try and punish with an aggressive jungler next to it. So now, we're looking at jungle bans. Could it be an Olaf removed from Shadow that he got 15 kills against G2 last time? It's going to be the Rek'Sai too, so get rid of the mid lane jungle power 2v2s that Shadow could look to lock in here. Yeah, I mean, his scoreline was 16, 2, and 5 in Game 5 of that series. Uh, also, interesting side note, as you know, I love my useless stats, Mr. Frierson. Um, <laughs> they're not useless, they're quick! Seventeenth, the 17th unique champion that Perks has played this split, and the first time that he has played Azir in the 2020 season. So, I just, I love seeing that, seeing the amount of diversity, but I want to see what performance it'll put on the Rift today. Rek'Sai has been banned from G2, they have not yet banned that Olaf. And it is Aatrox and Misfortune removed from the pool for Mad Lion. So uh, you have to feel probably jungle pick uh, in this next phase format and save top lane for a potential counter. Yeah, that's that's usually what they end up going for. We actually, even when Mad Lions have been on red side, they don't always use it for like solo lane picks because often Humanoid will have to lock in uh, a mid laner early on. But with a Rome in the roster here, you have to figure since his top lane pick hasn't been shown yet, you can secure him a good matchup. So that's the Olaf that we were talking about. This is a champion that Shadow, when he had the 16 kill Olaf game, I want to remind you, it wasn't like he just ran over G2 early on. It wasn't like insane ganks coming in from him. It was in every single single fight that Mad Lions took against G2, Shadow just ran straight at the G2 backline and farmed so many kills, so he was an absolute monster in that game. Yeah, he was, and also, no ways. Oh! oh! And Bane? Okay, holy moly, so, um, I actually completely forgot to ask, like, what AD is going to be paired with Yumi, but I can't think of a more <laughs> terrifying duo, like, you will never be able to escape Vayne. Escape Vayne. Yeah, no, Vayne's going to be super fast too. Not just, you know, when she activates the ult, gets all the movement speed running down at her targets here, but with a Yumi on top of her as well. That can be a really interesting one. Now, I don't think her laning power is going to be super high, but of course, with a ranged enchanter support next to her, you can try to bolster that up just a little bit. And later in the game, when you see an Olaf running at you, having the yes. invisibility, having the ability to kite around a bit, even if your Condemn isn't going to be super again, uh, effective against him when he's ulted up, that does give you very strong you know, play around that Olaf type of option. Oh man, okay, when we get to the video, I want to look up Caps' uh, Vayne stats. Before that though, let's zoom out. You've talked about the side lane play and how the Vayne into the Olaf has some tools. Let's talk about the team comps as a whole. 5v5s, what do you make? Yeah, so 5v5s are super interesting because neither team has like the clear identified front to back team fight. I think G2 are going to go into the mid to late game team fights with a really bolstered up backline with the Azir and the Vayne. They have very high DPS and a set to sort of just run down their opposition. Whereas Mad Lions, they have good long range engage tools with the Gangplank ultimate, the Leon ultimate. They can try to find picks and leading into those fights, they want to put down poke with the LeBlanc and the Ezreal to make sure the 5v5s go their way. 
Right, poke from afar, long range engage. This is fun. I mean, Vedius had a very strong uh, a line on, on Ready Check where he was saying, you can expect blood. This should be an action-packed series, and I like the comps that we've already drafted. Kaiser on the Leona is going to be so much fun to watch. This is the first game, and there's so much on the line. The fact that Mad Lions have already beaten G2 in a five-game um, series, uh, it just builds up a lot of expectation for how well they're going to perform today. Um, I'm obviously trying to buy a little bit of time as I'm expecting the video <laughs> to come in in just a moment or two. Uh, but let's see who's going to show up. Of course, G2 Esports, they, they have had a lot of time to change. I think uh, last weekend, I talked a little and said if you turned off nameplates and you were going to show the G2 Mad Series and the G2 OG Series, you would not think it's the same team. No, absolutely not. G2 definitely spun things around coming into that week, and they're spinning things around one more time here against Mad very different looking draft in game number one. This is going to be a series that people remember for a long time. I hope it's going to be fast. I hope it's going to be bloody. I hope it's going to be good. I hope so too. G2 versus Mad Lions. And welcome to Summoner's Rift, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody else. It is Mad Lions taking on G2 Esports. I did some digging while I had some time. This is the second time that Caps has played Vayne. The last time he did it was in the 2018 Summer Playoffs. He won that game 5, I 2, knew it. and 6. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. Now, you mentioned it already, not the strongest laning presence. Um, and especially with the Yumi, they need a little bit of time. Uh, we had a lot of discussion in our prep leading up to this week around how Shadow and Yankos in particular were the central figures in a lot of our discussions for when G2 Mad played last time. Um, Yankos even said it in the interview. He was like, jungling is about a team game, understanding where we move, why we move, what we want to do. Um, so Ender, what do we need to look at in terms of this Lee Sin versus Olaf matchup and, and expectations on the players? Yeah, on, honestly, the, the Yanko Shadow matchup is, I think, the one that is going to best define the outcome of this series. And it, it goes past champion picks. It sort of transcends that because you have two players with very distinct styles coming into this game. On one hand, you have Yankos, you know, unquestionably the best jungler in Europe that rarely ever gets challenged in the pace of, you know, how often the enemy jungler is ganking, do they get in his face, all these things. He just sort of walks into every single matchup with a little bit of swagger and, and dominates his opposition. But Shadow is the type of guy that tries to download you before the game. He knows exactly how long you're going to take on your first clear. He knows all these timers. And usually his setup is to come and try and attack you in your jungle. We've seen those crazy level 3 invades where he sits in brush inside your jungle for 15 seconds and then gets the solo kill. We've seen that. We've seen the level 2 ganks. We've seen all of it. But Yankos is the type of player that won't just let that happen to him. And in a lot of those games in the last series, when these two teams faced off, off, he often tried to get into the enemy jungle and disrupt Shadow's early game plan. Now, in a game like this, it's the Olaf, so it is just going to be a full clear here for Shadow, but this is the type of thing we're going to have to continue tracking later on in the series, because when Shadow looks for his early moves, if it isn't disrupted at all, he's going to have a field day in the jungle. And I guess theoretically speaking, and uh, there's been no disruption to his plan yet. Like when you no. see the matchup, when you see the comps. So what does this mean going forward? Kaiser does manage to connect to that Zenith Blade. Uh, actually ends up coming a little worse for wear in that trade. Uh, Mickey's still got a lot of mana to play with. He'll be able to heal up. Caps over time. And this wave pushing, not a big surprise. Similarly, Perks and, and uh, Wanda shoving in mid and top respectively. We're mm -hmm. seeing the early phases of the game play out as anticipated. If you were to put on your... Um, you know, prediction well. <laughs> hat. Let's look forward. Kaiser There's a gank coming in. And Kazi, the exhaust comes down. Condemn into the wall. Could be very valuable. I haven't seen if it's been used yet. That's a tumble forward. Flash, no. Level 3 not achieved yet. Now, Mickey is going to keep chasing forward. It's a double kill to the vein. I hadn't noticed there was no Condemn available. His capsule's only level 2. But Humanoid's trying to put some pressure on Perks. He's got a Knight available. Is there enough cooldowns? And the answer is no. Um, GG, go next. Double kill vein. 
I mean, it's looking grim down there wow. in the bot lane. G2 opened game one in this series with a statement right there. Yankos being able to find the move down towards the bot side. There just wasn't the vision there to enable Karzi and Kaiser to push on up. So a very nice move by him to get down bot side. Now there's no summoner spells left at all in the bottom lane. There is going to be a huge target down here for junglers, for top lane teleport plays, for all of it. We'll watch this one more time because both bot lanes level two. The lane frozen a perfect position here where Karzi has to overextend to go for the last hit and there's not much you can do even as Ezu with a flash and a dash when you're that far down the lane you are just going to be chased down. Yeah absolutely I love the synchronized uh, emotes as well true teamwork on the side of G2. Um, as we watch this play around the top I, I want to ask a question around Karzi and Kaiser being that pushed forward full clears on both sides like is that a good play from Yankos, or is that you know poor setup on, on Kazi and Kaiser's side? I mean, I, I think it's a little bit of both, right? Okay. Because uh, Kazi and Kaiser knew that Shadow was doing a full clear, pathing from the bot side of his jungle to the top side, so they didn't have any support. So they either needed to look for the full bounce on, on the third wave right there and, and keep it a little bit more central inside the lane for added safety or go for an, an early ward. And you can really tell this because if you take the inverse and see what were G2 solo laners doing during that time when they knew their jungle spot side well perks and wonder had both stepped forward to put a ward sort of inside of shadow's top side jungle so they were going to be 100 percent safe that's why shadow could only look to try and walk in and steal away a blue buff and even that he wasn't successful for so it was just a little bit of a team difference right there and kaiser and cars got punished they did indeed now caps and uh, mickey are being jumped on the tumble is going to allow them to escape one other thing that i uh you know want to just point out is the fact that caps uh, as well as Mickey, the fact that they've got that exhaust in the bottom lane, not only was it valuable for the kill, but also if at any point Shadow decides to start chasing him down or a humanoid flank jumps in his face, that exhaust could prove hugely valuable in the mid to late stages of the game. No, absolutely, right? And Caps is also going to be able to uh, rock the cleanse for himself, so he doesn't need to build a QSS later on or anything like that. He's going to be very fine with that one right there. And as soon as he gets that Blade of the Ruined King, like, he becomes such a threat. You know, Vayne's one of those AD carries that loves to go into a side lane, so you can just leave Caps to his own devices in the middle stages of the game. Perks would love to set up down towards mid because Caps is going to be fine against a lot of the things that Mad Lions are going to be throwing his way. Yes. Six minutes in, and right now, Caps uh, just marginally behind us. CS big wave in front of him. We've seen Shadow lingering for a moment or two. And while we've just got a quick respite, I want to just draw attention to Yankos again, because um, a lot of question marks were thrown up around uh, Yankos' play in the opening series against Mad Lions. If you compare his regular season stats to playoffs, kills plus assists at 15, the reason it looks close is because of how dominant Yankos was against Origin. Uh, more than double the average deaths of 15. Um, you know, goal difference negative as opposed to positive. Yankos was one of the, the, the let's say, biggest offenders uh, of being outplayed. And it's a combination of him not showing up, but also a lot of credit to Shadow for being ready for what Yankos was going to do. Yeah, I'm like, I think the problem was that he did show up. He showed up to too many things. Yankos was super greedy in that series. And, and, and the whole best of five was almost defined by people being over aggressive from both teams, right? And Yankos did it more often than others in that series. And that's why his death numbers were so high. But it's really because both teams, all 10 players, are super, super confident in their ability to jump forward, in their ability to outplay. And we may be gearing up for another move around the bot side. The shadow pops on over the wall, but Yankos is lying in wait. Yeah, I think Shadow may have just become visible. I didn't see on the Observer side. We'll toggle back to God Mode Vision in a moment, and he does back away. And the reason I, I you know, we, we are doing a lot of focus on these two players is um, Shadow and the Mad Lions. Oh, all that thought is Humanoid does a lot of damage onto Perks. Flash still available for Perks, and Humanoid used his ulti, so didn't want to chase any further. But now the kill third is up. He's got that Blasting one, the Corrupting Potion, and the Gold. Still a thousand difference between the two teams. But all of our focus has been on the bottom lane because honestly, yeah. everybody keeps <laughs> showing up there. Yeah, right now, Shadow using that bot lane pressure to be able to walk in and try to take this Infernal Drake. Yankos does know what's going on, but because Perks just went back to base and doesn't have the teleport, it can only be a steal attempt. And he's and gonna he gets do it. it! He's done it! He gets the Infernal Drake! <laughs> doesn't manage to get out, but I think probably worth in the grand scheme of things. 
Yeah, so long-term worth, short-term pain for Caps yeah. down bot side. But again, Caps already has two kills. So when you look at that matchup, it's still going to be very comfortable for him. So G2 are going to say, yeah, perfect. We'll take that objective. No problem whatsoever. And that's just really unfortunate for Mad Lions now, whose entire play got thwarted. They were supposed to take the Infernal Drake, now make the swap to top side where they can look for a gank, look for the Rift Herald, everything, you know, where they can get all the objectives. Well, now they're going to be running up top side without that kind of a luxury with the objective behind them. So they're going to try to blitz this one down. It, it does look like they are giving away their information, but Caps and Mickey cannot get over here quickly enough. No, they absolutely can't. But let's talk about that top lane matchup as now we're going to start seeing them shuffle around. Wonder has been shoving into Arome fairly consistently throughout the course of the game. He's got that cull, already farmed up 35 minions. Uh, Arome's now used the cannon barrage to clear off the wave in the bottom lane as well as mm -hmm. his team picking up the Herald top. Um, but, you know, what are we going to see expectation-wise from how Wonder's set and Arome's GP should play out the next 10 to 15 minutes? Yeah, well, in, in all honesty, I don't think these two players are going to be matching up against yep. each other really again. Like, they'll pick up waves sometimes in the same lane, but this 1v1 doesn't exist. And I think Mad Lions are going to be perfectly happy with that one, where Rome can just farm up on the GP. And in the lane swap situation, GP is super, super powerful because you saw how he is ultimate there, soaked up an entire wave and a half bot side. That means that the tower plates are going to be going down at a very similar play pace, while Mad Lions were also able to secure the Rift Held for themselves. So that champion in it in its own is able to generate a lot of advantage in this type of a situation. But really, Aroma is just the type of player for Mad Lions where it's never going to be focused around him winning his lane or dominating. It really is how can he impact the team. The last series they played against G2, it was all about his teleport plays. In this game one, it's going to be about those cannon barrages. And we see while um, Shadow was making his way top to put some pressure on Wonder, he pays respect, sitting way back in the lane, Rift Herald has now cleared out. Tower First Blood picked up to Mad Lions and they've stolen themselves an 800 gold lead. Uh, they got that kill, obviously in the Dragon Pit. They got a bunch of plates in that tower. And Wonder is a little bit at risk of being jumped on here. Kaiser Solar Flare is available. But Yankos was relatively close and Mad Lions decide against it. Kaiser's got those boots of mobility already picked up. And I'm just such a fan of Leona's. I love seeing the play <laughs> pattern. I love seeing uh -huh. um, you know, the, the, the potential engages, especially when we combine it with an Olaf, with a Blanc. Uh, I think there's gonna be some pressure on, on Kaiser to help set up his team as Humanoid uh, gets smacked in the face by Sand Soldier a few times. That sting has already been picked up by Perks in the mid lane. Yeah, this game is already looking to be way less explosive uh, than the series uh, between G2 and Mad last time, but that's not without Mad Lions looking for plays themselves. It's just G2 have been showing a lot more respect this time around, not running into a fight around the Rift Herald instead, saying, hey, we actually would prefer to have more time to get the Azir the items that are better than Mercury Treads, um, finish off the Blade of the Rune King and, and all this for the Vayne as well. So they decided to trade some pressure. That means they do lose the first tower, and Mad Lions do have... Uh, a small but meaningful gold advantage at the moment, even after those early plays did go poorly for them. But Mad Lions, I can't help but feel like, are going to struggle a little bit later on when it comes to the team fights and actually finding their proper setup because their their fights are a little bit wonky. It's not the most obvious front to back team fight like I think you're going to see from the side of G2. Instead, okay. you are going to be looking to split up the fight and look for like almost mini skirmishes where Ezreal can just be hitting one target, dashing around with the arcane shift landing his cues, where Shadow can be sprinting out of caps or perks and really denying them the ability to lay down damage in fights. That's how they have to think about it, how they can drive a wedge in the middle of G2's 5v5 and, and split them into the smaller pieces. I'm so happy to see the opening of this game. You know, a lot of fans, uh, analysts, uh, obviously expecting G2 to be the heavy favorites, much like they were Hello. the last time. And this is, I think, was a fairly obvious bait, as now Yankos has arrived. The chapter has been thrown down, and Kaiser's been locked up. He's still got Flash available. Cannon Barrage was used as well, so a number of ultimates. But Yankos and Shadow, they are on the same side of the map very, very often. And right now, nobody dies in that play. Mad Lions, they've not given up control of the jungle. And this well. is a five-man stack. This is a five-man <laughs> dive. If the Zenith Blade connects, somebody will die. Yankos caps, and of course, Mickey flying on caps. They've been able to escape for now. Yeah, as soon as the wave starts diminishing and a couple of Mad Lions players start backing up, here we go for the fight, though. Teleport in from Wonder. Uh, you can't get away with the Vayne pass 
aggressive as well as the Yumi slows. That's a flash forward from Caps. He continues to chase down. That's not going to be enough to stun Kazi as now Mad Lions are full on retreating. The Emperor's Divide holds Kazi in place and the teleport nets them two quick kills. Yeah, Mad Lions just got baited right there so hard. G2 is like letting them have their time. It's like, oh yeah, don't worry, you can control the entire jungle. But as soon as Humanoid walked back into mid lane, Wonder pulled the trigger. Caps dove in there with that Vayne Yumi combo and there was no escape as you said. Look at it. Caps diving on forward because G2 know they're the ones that can rotate into this fight first. Looks like Yankos even followed Kaiser through the flash there so he was able to get some extra damage and the silver bolts to finish off the kill on towards Kaiser. Of course, after the flash ultimate to pick off Karzi, it also turns into the second Drake of the game for G2 because Yankos was able to pick off that steal the first time around. Oh, 3-0-1. On Caps's vein, um, he's got a Blade of the Rune King already completed, as well as those Berserkers Greaves. And yes, Madline still hold the gold lead, so it is looking and feeling very G2 favored, but do not discount the Mad Lions. Now, the story that I was trying to set up um, was that for the first 15 minutes of gameplay, Mad Lions are still making some plays. They have been out, maybe not out executed or outplayed in the skirmishes thus far, but they've got themselves a tower lead. They're still ahead in gold. So, Mad Lions, they just cannot afford to lose some control of this game and allow G2's mid game to stomp them out of the opening of the series. Yeah, that's where I, it, it's a little bit worrisome for Mad, though, because even though they do have a lead, again, how they pick off their fights is going to be a bit of a worry towards me. As you can see, G2 are just going to be running at people with the set to try and pick them off here. So, I think Mad Lions have been doing a good job of, you know, pushing their control into the enemy jungle, but that play down bot side, where they get teleported on, where they're not all fully committing towards the play that worries me because wait a second Roma's just walking in what is he doing oh I have no idea we need to see some vision on that like uh, why would what? he just walk in I do not understand what just happens that just can't happen it's a semi-finals you're one best of five away from going to the finals tomorrow and you run underneath the tower mad lions making critical mistakes here against yeah. g2 yes they've been playing the map well as a team but now they need to buckle down you cannot give g2 inches or they will take a mile so okay wait wait, wait. so what is happening here so, so Karzi is on the way oh, up, too early. but he's way too far away. Like this, just this is one of those things that in a VOD yeah. review you just say, "Yeah, I was trolling." There's nothing else you can learn from this other than it was just objectively the wrong decision. Oh man, thought the support was going to be there quicker than it was, and unfortunately, Arome pays the price. It's his first death of the game, but he gives it to the arguable only player you don't want to give it to. Vayne is now 4-0-1. and one. Another recurve bow picked up, but I'm going to keep drawing your attention. The gold lead and the tower lead is still in favor of Mad Lions as Wanda should be sure. able to pick up at least the first tower of the game for now. And Mad Lions, um, they are still trying to really land a blow. Um, they have picked up at least one kill, but it was donated. It was when Yankos went to steal the dragon. So what can we see from Mad Lions in this was the word you used wonky team comp uh, to set up some of those picks. They've got themselves a man immune. They've got themselves a Ludens Echo and Humanoid and Kaiser are going to try put some damage down but this is a very very fed Caps. Mickey does get rooted up. The true shot barrage misses. Crucially Caps gets into some trouble. He throws down Ooh. the cleanse. Now he's rolling and tumbling and ducking around. Silver Bolts won't be enough to help it. Mad Lions have found the play. They got themselves two kills for one and they got themselves a teleport out of perks as well. Well, that's exactly what they needed to be looking for. When I say picks with the LeBlanc plus the Leona right there, able to find that one in a one for two trade. They saw Wonder Bot side. They knew Yankos wasn't able to rotate up and find the pick. So even though Caps was able to find the initial kill in that exchange, Mad Lions as a team are fully committing towards the play and they acted quickly this time. That's important. Decisive action against G2 will net you wins. And that's a good step back here for Mad Lions. All right, really is. So here's the setup. Kaiser will get in range for Humanoid. That exhaust again reduced a lot of that early damage. Yeah, so I do, th I I feel like Humanoid might have gone in just a little bit early because as you saw, so much damage went onto him before Caps could be CC'd up by Kaiser. Uh, notice there's also Mikhail's Crucible on uh, Mickey X there and the cleanse from Caps, so it is very hard to lock that guy down. Thankfully, he was low enough because the burst damage Humanoid put in that Shadow was able to finish him off. And those are sort of the two duels that I'm going to be looking at in team fights later on in this game. 
game, game because it's very clear for Mad Lions that Caps is going to be a problem. Now, Mad Lions have two people that are supposed to deal with him. One is Shadows Olaf. Now, in the 1v1, I don't think Shadows Olaf can do anything. Caps has too much gold based off of those kills. He's even in levels with the Olaf, but when you throw Humanoid into the mix, this LeBlanc is going to be able to put damage down onto Caps. Very low range ADC on this Vayne makes it easier for Humanoid to do things. But again, in the 1v1, I still don't think it's going to work. It has to be Humanoid and Shadow working together. Well, we'll see if they can. As it stands, Yankos is going to find himself and engage. Gets the kick into Kaiser, but it won't really go very far. Oh, that went over the wall! Perks is not in a little bit of trouble. He continues to chase down. So much damage onto Shadow. And the Perks will manage to help out the rest <laughs> of the team. Um, what? How did he fly over the wall? Honestly, there was a lot going on in that fight. Yes. We're going to have to check out the replay in that one because that, that was the situation. You saw it, right? G2 is trying to go in a straight 5v5 right down, force it down on towards Mad Lions there. And Mad Lions weren't able to find the angle on the train to split up the team fight. That's the third Cloud Drake, or the third Drake being the Cloud going over to G2. Now, as we'll see how the hippity hoppity goes in this fight here. It starts off with a nice kick on towards Kaiser from Yankos. And then as we get into the dive, backline with Perks. Ah, there we Oop, go. Flips him on up the there. the soldiers. <laughs> yeah, but they couldn't quite push him over the wall. The wall is way too big for that one. But as I was sort of talking about, you see the problem with fighting in that corridor is that G2 were not able to be split up. They chose one side of the fight, so Aroma and Humanoid stuck on the other like, ah, oh, we can't really help you out too much here with that one. 19 minutes into the game, three Drakes already, and I think a Cloud Drake, when you consider the movement speed in the CDR, is going to be so difficult for Mad Lions to deal with. They cannot concede Drake at number four. Caps has just picked up his Rage Blade, Nash's Tooth has been completed for perks, but Kazi is also activated Trinity Force, plus a fully stacked Neuromana. Mana, Trinity Force for Arome, and he's still working to finish off that cult. A little bit behind the CS, the uh, farming priority in this mid stage of the game has not helped him out as much. Right, so we're at this point now where, as you're saying, like Karzi has his two core items. That's 30 or 40% CDR now on this Ezreal, 45 if he's running into the Inspiration Tree there as well. So he's feeling very, very good, and this is a point in the game where he should be super, super strong and has to deliver in the fight. The problem is because Caps has been accelerated a little bit more than was anticipated in this game for Mad Lions is that Mad don't have the clear-cut advantage at two items, so they're going to have to execute very, very well in this stage of the game in order to come back because I can't help but feel like the more time this game goes on, the better it is going yeah. to favor G2 as the, the soul spawns in three minutes, as Baron becomes a possibility when you have a vein with Bork and Rageblade just shred it down, when you have an Azir as well. All these things only make it easier for G2 to close the game. So the next five minutes, the, the next three minutes even around that soul is where Mad Lions have to get a big team fight win. Otherwise, it, it's going to push too far away from them. And right now, G2 are just playing very emboldened. Um, uh, Caps and Mickey were pushing that mid tower, staring down a potential engage. They didn't care. They just stood firm, took the tower down. They now have the tower lead at four to three. Wonder and Perks have done a good job of pushing up that bottom lane and consistently shoving it out. Um, still minus CS advantage in the mid lane as well as the top lane. Only Caps is a little behind us, but you don't care because he's farming champions. Five, one, and two. Two minutes to Cloud. So Ender, let's talk about the process. Let's watch Mad Lions and focus on how do they set up for this? Do they even want to fight it? I feel like they yes. have to fight it. Yes. So that's what I want to look at. Yeah, they definitely will fight around this. I really like the setup right now, sending two players down towards the bottom side of the map. Humanoid will only be able to get a bit of chunk damage down. But the idea is here. They want to play around the bot side. They have deep vision in that jungle as well that G2 are going to have to try and clear out once they do get their resets off. The sweepers come back up and they can get through some of that. But uh, one thing that was actually a problem for G2 in the Mad Lion series was actually when they had Lee Sin in the jungle was that they only had one sweeper on their team. So there were a lot of wards that Aromi was able to find big TP flanks onto and find the ways into the back line. Now, on the GP, I don't think he's going to be looking for teleport flanks, but only having one sweeper will mean deep wards like the one in that bot side jungle are going to persist and give Mad Lions crucial information around the Drake spawn. And interestingly, one that just teleported to the top lane they're going to um, go on to Baron. They started this. I mean, Rage Blade, Blade of the Rune King, Vayne. Look, Trevor, Humanoid's bot lane without a teleport. G2 oh, full vision word. control of the top side jungle. It's an Olaf. How does this guy steal it? 
Oh, I don't know how he gets in. He's got flash available to him. The blast gun has been popped. There's the cannon barrage already come down. Yankos has taken so much damage though. Inside the pit. That's the showstopper from Wonder. Kaiser is now taken out by Caps. They've traded for Yankos, but Arome is on the run. It's a double as Yumi flies into Wonder and will help take out Arome. Humanoid, you're late to the party, my friend. The last mad lion standing. And he will be chased away. He is going to flash to safety. Four for one, and the Baron completely exposed. Oh, look, Humanoid, you can run, but you cannot hide. G2 are going to be knocking on the Nexus door soon enough right here. They had started up the Baron, and sure, they would have loved to take it, but all they wanted was the fight right there. Everyone jumping over the wall to punish Mad Lions as they had to run in completely blind into the river. It's an excellent play from G2. They execute on it very, very well, and now they're going to pick up not just the Baron, but they're going to sprint back onto the map to try and secure the soul. Watch this play one more time because it's not like Caps can get over the wall without using his flash, but they're going to go for the full commit as the suplex delivers Wonder Oak while Caps flashes in to assassinate the, the Mad Lions backline right there too. The double kill and everything as Mad Lions are the first one around the pit. Oh, they are indeed. The Xenoblade I think just missed Perks, but Empress Divide would have saved him anyway. The engage comes in. Humanoid dashes forward. Perks still stays alive. Blast Can goes. Steal we'll it again. three into the pit. Just two, in fact, as Mickey goes to save Yankos. The Cloud Drake is available. 1,500 HP. Perks is very, very low. But Caps as well as one. got it. A holding on four. The Soul Point is picked up by G2 Esports. The Mad Lions are being ripped Carsey? apart. Carsey, however, on the back end no. of the fight, will do some work. It's a four for three, but they lose the soul. Karzi was trying to play the fight of his life right there, but it's not enough in the end. Somehow, Yankos returns at the end with 100% HP Mickey. after being chunked out. He got healed. He jumped into the pit to find the steal, and now it's him and Mickey versus Shadow underneath oh. the tower. It is not enough. They cannot be stopped, and G2 are running away with this game. That just felt personal. Yankos running down Shadow for the 16th kill. Shadow got 16 kills on Olaf to finish out game number five. And the team is being crushed. We'll keep our eyes on Yankos. I think he gets so much healing from Mickey. Yeah, so Mad Lions were trying to win the fight here, committing a lot towards perks, but not damaging the dragon. So even though they do chunk out Yankos, and that was supposed to finish off the kill, he dashed away from the final skill shot from Karzi, and then is able to return into the pit with the Q over the wall. Wonder doing so much work, just zoning into the back line, killing people while somehow surviving for a stupidly long amount of time. And now Caps <laughs> is on the hunt, Arome versus, oh no. Yeah, he's down. He's down 0-4-2. This Gangplank has not had a fun time. Admittedly, the game started to fall away from other lanes. So by the time Arome was allowed to play League of Legends, uh, he was not particularly well set up for success. G2 Esports have opened this game extremely confidently. The first pick, Uni, and the second phase, Vayne, have stolen this game away. 14 out of 17 kills involved for uh, Caps, and 16 out of 17 kills involved for Mickey. They've led from the front. Once again, much like the Origin series. It, it's just crazy, you know? We saw the Aphelio zillion combo with Caps last week. Now it's the, the Vayne plus Yumi dealing absolute damage to Mad Lions here. Humanoids down bot lane. They're giving up their base right now. G2 on the siege as they get big damage down, though. Yeah, they really do. This should be a counter kill, not just yet. Finally, Wonder goes down. Caps and Yanko start to back away, but you got to be very, very careful. That's a very fed vein. While that's going on, Humanoid without their TP continues to play the side lane. Perks will be chipping away at that inhibitor. G2 will at least open the doors to Mad Lion's base, but have not yet broken it apart. Oh no, not again! <laughs> oh, this is a dead gangplank. I mean, you just cannot get away from that. Um, actually, ironically, I think if Caps would build a frozen ballast, it could stick to people even closer. You know? <laughs> I learned a little bit from LEC update. But now Caps and Mickey, you've bitten off a lot, but okay, not going to be able to take down four in total. Mickey will get dropped as well, donating two kills to the Mad Lions cause. Yeah, it wouldn't be a G2 game without getting a little bit loose towards the finish right there as Karzi slowly picking up a lot of gold in this game. Should be able to finish yes. off that Blade of the Rune King very, very soon. So the gold is not as big as you would expect when G2 have taken a Baron, have the soul, have two inhibitor towers broken so on the side of Mad Lions. I've got a question for you because I feel like G2 have done a lot of very good things this game. 
But I also feel that Mad Lions have, to a similar degree, but, you know, G2 are just playing at a slightly higher level. Um, you know, can you rate or review the overall performance of Mad Lions this game and, and you know, how they've opened the series? So it's a really interesting question uh, to me because I feel like Mad Lions at times have been playing like at their peak, like very strong. Like you look at the first, you know, five to ten minutes of gameplay, it was really good. But you had those small hiccups, right, where the bot lane's pushing without putting down a ward when they know the Yankos could be down there and Shadow yeah. can't be. Then you and have, Arome top. Yeah, the Arome top play. Even before that, you had all five members of Mad Lions down bot side trying to siege a tower, but then Humanoid leaves, Arome starts leaving, and then all of a sudden G2 teleport on them. So I feel like Mad Lions have had the right idea a lot of the time, right. but it were okay. those crucial mistakes that somehow Caps comes away with five kills, and now team fights are just so like near impossible for Mad Lions to win that uh, the last 10 minutes they've been trying to come back in their own ways, but eventually it's going to come down to a 5v5 that is very unrealistic that they'd be able to win. Okay, so that's what I want to look for in the next game. Um, we've, we've seen a lot of series open in one direction and then pivot throughout the course of our playoffs. So for Mad Lions, look, they're down 5k. They've got to deal with a 12, 3, and 4 vein that has a full item advantage over Kazi. Um, you know, Mercurial Scimitar as well as the um, Phantom Dancer to back it up. Perks. And a Cleanse, of... and a Mikhail's. Like, mm -hmm. you can't CC mm -hmm. the man. And Yumi, and Yumi, yeah. and the Exhaust. So. <laughs> It is it is a very difficult situation for the Mad Lions to come back in this game. Admittedly, they do have some poke, they do have some pick potential. But Yankos has got some support from the rest of the team. He's going to jump in onto Shadow, kick him back before the Ragnarok can be enabled. And here comes Caps. That's a chapter already locking down a Rome. Got to find Look himself once. Flashing through the gate. Caps is tumbling and rolling around. Already used the flash. Exhaust is on cooldown. There's no tower, remember. And Caps will finally get taken out by Humanoid, but at the cost of his entire team. This could be the final fight. The inhibitor's going down. There are minions pouring through the mid lane. Humanoid, you need to get back to defend. He's got no TP. The recall will take two time. He's just conceding it. They've conceded it. Right, G2 Esports has smashed Mad Lions. 30 minutes on the clock, 23 kills underneath their belt. 19 of those 23 kills was thanks to Caps, Vayne, and 22 out of 23 to Mickey Zumi. G2 opened the series one to zero. Wow. You know, game one needed to be a statement from G2, and bringing out the vein absolutely was that. They crushed through that game. Caps looked near unstoppable in yep. those fights, and now, like, you know, coming into the series, you're saying, hey, last time G2 had to scramble after game one. Well, now it's Mad Lions that are going to have to be able to figure out some way to deal with this vein. I don't think you can ban the vein, but do you have no. to remove the Yumi? Then there's too many things you got to get rid of. I mean, if you remove the uni, in theory, it also reduces the priority on likes of Ezreal as well. So, um, side selection is going to be very important. Mad Lions chose red side for this game. They will have side selection again uh, uh, for game two as they, they lost. Um, but I want to see them tidy up some of those plays because I really liked your summary. And uh, the ideas or the decisions were good, but then minor missteps in execution. That's kind of what allowed you two to get their foot in the door. And that's all G2 needed to win the game. Yeah, I mean, G2 said very clearly, we are going to play through this bottom lane, and yeah. Caps will reach that point of critical mass where you can't dive in and kill him anymore, and he's just going to 1v9 the game. And that point came at eight minutes into the match. That was certainly unexpected, but it's a testament to how G2 were able to punish Mad Lions consistently throughout. I feel really good about the quality of the opening game. Uh, I have Frostgrove in particular had a very impassioned statement talking about how G2 uh, really didn't you know, play clean. didn't really show up the last time they played against Mad Lions. This is a slightly different look, and I think um, I'm going to project a little bit. I felt that Mad Lions were a little bit nervous. Look, after the break, the analysts will take a look at how Caps ran away with the game and whether or not Mad Lions will be able to shut him down. Is it going to be enough though? Now the rest of the team has to retreat. Two members knocked by Fnatic. Fnatic don't even care. It was a bait to get the 